in this video we are going to discuss the topic risk and return of financial management let's see what risk is we make investments with an intention to make a return out of it risk is the variability in these returns risk implies a degree of uncertainty risk is measured by variability in return higher the variability higher will be the risk and lower the variability lower will be the risk okay let's see different types of risk first one is credit risk it is also called default risk it is an investor's risk that the borrower will not pay the amount when they become due second one is foreign exchange risk or currency risk it is the risk due to the changes in the exchange rate of one currency in relation to another third one is interest rate risk it is the risk uh, due to the changes in the market interest rate next type of risk is market risk it is the risk due to changes in the market risk factors like stock prices interest rate commodity prices foreign exchange risk etc next one is industry risk this risk is particular to an industry uh, another important risk is political risk um, sometimes the political decisions may affect the uh, operations of the business the risk arises due to the political decisions are called political risk now let's see what return is return is an income received on an investment plus any change in the market price usually expressed as a percentage of beginning market price of the investment there is a direct or positive relationship between risk and return so if the risk increases the return also increases if there is low risk there will be low return we can calculate the return on an investment by using this formula r is equal to pt minus pt minus 1 plus pt divided by pt minus 1 into 100 where r is equal to the rate of return on our investment pt is equal to selling price or stock price at the end of the period pt minus 1 is buying price or stock price at the beginning of the period and dt is the cash dividend received during the year Okay, now see an example of rate of return. Here, Joey purchased a stock for $5,000. At the end of the year, stock is worth $7,000. Joey was paid dividend of $200. Calculate the total return received by Joey. Here, the $5,000 is the buying price, uh, which is PT minus 1. And the PT is $7,000, uh, which is the price at the end of the year. And uh, during the year, Joey was paid a dividend of 200, uh, which is DT. And so we get is 44%. Joey gets a 44% return from this investment. As I have said before, there is a direct relationship between risk and return. US Treasury bills are the government securities that mature less than one year and are very safe securities. There is no risk of default. T bills offer most conservative rate of return. T-bills are the bills that are backed by the full faith and credit of U.S. government. So, this security is considered as a risk-free security. And the U.S. government bonds and corporate bonds have longer maturity periods than T-bills. Corporate bonds have a default risk and it gives slightly higher returns than the government bonds. So, now let's see a concept called a certainty equivalent concept. CE is a concept that describes the amount of cash an investor would have to receive to be indifferent between the payoff and a given risk. It answers the question, what is the smallest certain payoff an investor would accept in exchange for a risky cash flow? A CE is less than the value expected by the investor and it is called a risk aversion. When CE is equal to expected value, it is called risk indifference. When CE is greater than expected value, it is called risk preference. Now let's see how can we calculate the expected return of an investment. Expected return is the weighted average of possible returns, but the weight represents the possibilities of occurrence. Expected return can be calculated using this formula. R bar is equal to N sigma I is equal to 1 Ri into Pi, where R is equal to expected return. Ri is equal to return for ith possibility and Pi is equal to probability of that return occurring. Now let's see an example of calculating expected return. Let's see the question. 
Suppose if you know a given investment had a 50% chance of earning a return of $10, a 25% chance of earning a return of $20, and there is a 25% chance of bearing a loss of $10, what is your expected return? Okay, the probabilities are 50% for a return of $10 and 25% chance of earning a return of $20 and a 25% chance of a loss of $10. So here we multiply its return with its probability and calculate RI into PI and the total of these figures will be the expected return of the investment. Next is standard deviation. Standard deviation is a statistical measure of variability of a distribution around its mean. It is the square root of the variance. The equation for calculating standard deviation is root of n sigma i is equal to 1 ri minus r bar all square into pi you know let's see an example of this there are two stocks here stock a and stock b the return on stock a is 13 15 and 17 and the probabilities of these returns are 0.25 0 0.50 0 0.25 respectively the return on stock b are 7 15 and 23 the probabilities are 0 0.25, 0 0.50 and 0.25 and the standard deviation for stock A is 1.41. We get a standard deviation of 5.66 for stock B. Here the standard deviation of stock B is greater than the standard deviation for stock A. So stock B is more riskier than stock A. Okay, now let's see what coefficient of variation is. Coefficient of variation provides a measure of relative risk. It is the ratio of the standard deviation of a distribution to the mean of that distribution. It is the measure of relative risk. CV provides measure of relative risk. CV is calculated by dividing the standard deviation by the mean of the expected return. CV is equal to standard deviation divided by R bar. Okay, now let's see an example here. The expected return of investment A is 6 percentage and investment B is 1.8 percentage. Standard deviation of investment A is 0 0.04 and investment B is 0 0.06. By using the equation, we can find out the CV and uh, here we get the CV of investment A uh, which is 0.67 percentage and in CV of investment B is 0.33 percentage. Though investment A has greater CV than investment B, investment A is more riskier than investment B. Okay, now let's see the risk and return in a portfolio. Portfolio is a mix of two or more assets such as stocks, bonds, etc. The purpose of having a portfolio of investments is to reduce risk. A good portfolio consists of financial assets that are not strongly positively correlated. The purpose of having a portfolio of investments rather than a single investment is to reduce risk. Covariance and correlation are useful portfolio measures. Covariance It shows the way two different assets in a portfolio are expected to vary together. Covariance is a statistical measure of degree to which two variables move together. It shows the way two different assets in a portfolio are expected to vary together. If the returns of two stocks were move in an opposite direction, they will have a negative covariance. If the expected returns moves in the same direction, they will have a positive covariance. If the expected return of two stocks are unrelated, they would have zero covariance. A correlation measures the strength of a relationship between two variables. The correlation coefficient always lies in a range from minus 1 to 1. Positive correlation means two securities returns move in the same direction. Negative correlation implies securities returns move in the opposite direction. A zero correlation means there is no linear relationship between variables. Now let's see how can we calculate the return from a portfolio. A portfolio rate of return is the weighted average of expected returns of all the investments constituting that portfolio. Portfolio return can be calculated using the formula R bar of P is equal to N sigma I is equal to 1 w i into r bar i let's see an example here the r bar or expected return of investment a b and c are 20 percentage 11 percentage and 8 percentage 
and the proportion are 40 percentage 20 percentage and 40 percentage and by using the formula we can calculate portfolio return and here the portfolio return is 13.4 percentage okay what you need to do is to multiply the investments expected return with this proportion and the total will be the portfolio return here we get a portfolio return of 13.4 percentage okay now let's see the concept diversification diversification refers to holding a wide range of different investments in a portfolio the primary goal of diversification is to reduce the risk of a portfolio diversification reduces the portfolio risk as long as different investments are unlikely to all move in the same direction the securities in a portfolio should move in an opposite direction or it is better to have a negatively correlated securities in a portfolio okay there are mainly two types of risk in a portfolio systematic risk and unsystematic risk systematic risk is the one that affects the overall market such as the change in the country's economic position tax reforms or a change in the world energy situation in smaller portfolios diversification can cut variability dramatically the benefit from diversification will tends to decrease within the number of securities in a portfolio the systematic risk is also known as the market risk non diversified risk and unavoidable risk it is associated with the changes in return based on the market as a whole this risk cannot be avoided and systematic risk it is the risk which is independent of economic political and all other such factors it is associated with the particular company or industry and systematic risk is also known as unique risk diversifiable risk or avoidable risk it is associated with a specific company this risk can be avoidable through diversification capital asset pricing model or capm CAPM is an economic model for valuing a portfolio by relating its expected return and risk. This model states the relationship between the systematic risk and expected return for assets. The idea behind CAPM is that the investors demand an additional expected return, which is also known as risk premium, when asked to accept additional risk above that founding risk-free asset. The risk premium is the difference between the required rate of return on an investment and the risk free rate required rate of return on an investment at a risk free rate the risk premium varies in direct proportion to beta in a competitive market the equation is return is equal to rf plus rm minus rf into beta where rf is the risk free rate and rm is the market return rm minus rf is the market risk premium now let's see what beta is beta is an index of systematic risk it simply means the degree of change of a stock of a company due to market changes the average beta of stocks is 1 it just describes the investment sensitivity to market movements us treasury bills have a beta of 0 it is because the return is fixed and unaffected by the market changes so there is no risk in treasury bills so the beta will be zero the stock with the beta of greater than one are usually sensitive to the market movement so there will be higher risk stock with the beta of lesser than one are usually less sensitive to the market movement you suppose the risk free rate of the security is six percentage the market rate is 12 percentage and the beta is 1.25 then the required rate of return for the security would be r is equal to six plus 12 minus six into 1.25 so the return will be 13.5 percentage consider the above example but suppose that the value of beta is equal to 1.60 then the return would be 15.6 percentage so we see that the greater the value of beta the greater the systematic risk in turn the greater the required rate of return so as beta increases the risk increases as risk increases the return also increases this is the security market line Security market line is a graphical representation of the CAPM. It begins at a risk free rate or T bill rate and slopes upwards to the right. The dotted points are the risk free rate, and the, the portion between the SML line and the dotted line is the risk premium. We will be discussing some problems related to this topic in the next video. Like and subscribe to this channel and click on the bell icon to get notified.